Thank you. For hugging me, and I'm going to leave my shoe right up there. Um, so as you can tell uh, from this vulgar American accent, I am not native here. I am new. I came five and a half years off the boat, and I've been down in London building the tech scene, and now I've just moved to Manchester. So thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited. Um, wow, all right, there's my, there's my title right there. Who here has heard of Hacker House before? I'm just curious. Anybody? Yeah, you guys? All right. Who here has ever been hacked? Anybody? Yeah, my cousin just called me last week with uh, some pictures. I can't believe she has on her iCloud. <laughs> and she was like, Jenny, help. And I'm like, yeah, what happens? What happens when we get hacked? Who do you call? Right? Is there like a hotline somewhere? Yeah, because if you guys know one, please let me know. Right? Um, OK, so I'm just going to break it out into it. I'm going to ask you all really quite frankly, are we crazy? Are you crazy? I'm a little crazy too. Don't ask my exes, all right? But I, I am a little crazy. And I'm, 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 I just own it, right? And we should too. But you know, honestly, given the state of things right now, if you walk around and you look at the security landscape, you have five years ago, six years ago, and you walked around DEF CON, InfoSec, B side, Black Hat, all the big RSA, yeah, and you're like, dude, how do I secure my network? Yeah? You'll get this great song and dance about how you need an IDS, an IPS. Do you guys know what those are? I don't want to use words like because I'm not supposed to use them. So IDS system, so an, an intrusion detection system. You know, to, um, a firewall, right? Do you guys know what a firewall is? All right. Yeah, let's do this <laughs> little demo right there. Um, uh, let's see what else do they tell me you need. Oh, an AB. Do you guys know what an AB is? An antivirus. Yeah. All these big fancy words, and you walk home and you're like, yes, I am secure. Only well, yeah, right. Hello, hello, I mean one computer, 65,535 ports, just one computer alone, add a tablet, you know, a fit band, your water bottle, your handbag, your brakes on your car, well, you are your own telecoms company. There's no way we can keep up. How does this thing work? Here we go. <laughs> Hacking. Does, you, does that scare you when I say that word? True story, I started this thing called Hacker House. I have yet to have a bank account because the name hacker is in the word. Can you believe this? Four different banks. I even pen test one of them. And they're like, sorry, yeah, no, hacker word. We are bad. You know, can you believe that, right? Do you guys shudder at the word hacker? One thing I like to do is stand here. I am a hacker. I'm a certified ethical hacker. I'm a certified penetration tester, which, yes, is a real thing. <laughs> a little different, <laughs> especially you. Um, <laughs> we're here among friends, right? I'm going to tell you some secrets. None of that leaves this room. Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's some secrets. About two years ago, a well, all right, let's back up a little even. Well, three years ago, sad story, a friend of mine, very dear to my heart, killed himself. Who has heard of the boy Aaron Schwartz? Yeah? Good. I knew I liked you guys for a reason. Yes, so Aaron Schwartz was a boy who hacked MIT, JSTOR, got in where he wasn't supposed to. Phenomenal brain. Yeah, founder of uh, Reddit, one of the founders of Reddit, principal behind RSS, a founder of the World Wide Web itself. In fact, that's why Tim Berners-Lee spoke at his funeral. It was an absolute outrage that he killed himself. And I blame my government, my wonderful country, the Department of Justice, because this was retarded. This was so stupid, and it makes me angry. And as a result, three years ago, some sites got hacked. Some places went, uh, people went where they weren't supposed to. You guys have heard of trespassing and entering, yeah? No, this wasn't criminal fraud. This wasn't some weirdo, scary dude trying to like, you know, ha harness drugs and smuggle illegal women. You know, this wasn't some kind of creepy guy far away, hacker dude getting in with my credit cards. These are the 15 year olds up and down this country and my country. The same 16, 15 year olds that are hacking corporates and then being sentenced to jail and being s and thrown in solitary confinement. And you sit there and you're like, wait a minute, is this right? All these ports, all these devices, everything's connected. How does this work? Yeah. So here we are using this word. When actually guys, this is, these are the um, internet's immune system. These are the ones we need. These are, this is where we go from criminal to critical. 
So where are my math geeks out there? Raise your hands, what up? There you go. Yeah, so anything raised to the negative one inverts itself. So there we go. Here's my justification for why I, I, I am proud to be a hacker because I see more people, more things, more devices and attacks. Oh yeah, you got it, you can raise your hand. Yeah, so here we are, we're all connected and we've got all these attacks. Are we any safer because we got a firewall, another IDS system? Here's the thing for automation. Yeah, when you're targeted, no one cares about automation. 90% of hacks are auto update related. Patch your systems, spear phishing. Yeah, don't click on suspicious weirdo links. National standpoint for all her passwords. <laughs> Check your passwords, right? It's like no wonder I was hacked 17 times last year. Yeah. So here we are. I'm going to give you a bunch of crazy th uh, stats, scare you all. Ooh, you guys know what's going on. You, you know what's up, right? You're not sleeping under rocks. Here we are. Last year, my phone got hacked. RFID technology, NFC. Every time I was going in the tube, I was like, oh, there we go. Another card replicated. It was crazy. So I bought a an RFID replicator myself just to see how it works. Now this is where we get <laughs> really interesting. So here's a story. My uh, friend in Palo Alto has an 11-year-old son who came home and he was like, guess what? Girls have shorter password than boys. And he sits down and his mom's like, oh God. And I said, dude, tell me how you know this. He goes, well, I did a little bit of research. And that's right. And I saw in this research that girls' passwords and mom is like, oh no, he didn't, he didn't. He starts telling me he gains admin rights and moves unilaterally within the system. Got the faculty, got the teachers, got the, everybody within the district. I mean, mom's going, hello, that's illegal. And I'm going, right, keep walking me through it. Come on, what else did you do? I'm like, taking notes. This kid's 11. Yeah. And so, all right, as I got the notes down and I said, dude, you know this is actually illegal. And you know what he says? It's not illegal. It was too easy. Right. Okay, so now we got kids in the name of Aaron Schwartz trespassing and entering where they know they're not supposed to go because they're angry. And they said, wait a minute, time out, this is not okay. There's something here we need to talk about. And then you got 11 year olds that are like, wait, dude, this is way too easy. This can't be illegal, right? Two sides of the same coin. What are we doing about this? How do we fix this problem? Do you know, I spent last summer, I went home and I visited my cousin and I was teaching his kids how to like make their computers talk to each other. So I pulled up command prompt and they made them sing to each other. It was really fun. Um, and then they, you know, got really excited and into this. I showed them a few hacks on the games and, you know, they're like, come on, Jen, we want to do more. What else can we do? So they did a quick YouTube search and on that YouTube search, it was like, hack your school VPN. And the kid's like, please, Jen, please, can we hack our school VPN? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Go for it. <laughs> click. Wait, wait. Before you click, wait, actually, there's something I need to bring up. It's very important and I want you to take this seriously. Would you go to your school at night? And the five-year-old little girl sitting in my lap turns up to my aunt and she goes, no, the lights are off. <laughs> I was like, that is right, the lights are off. What about those doors? Yeah? Anybody got a key for those, for those locks? Those are going to be locked, right? And, <laughs> you know, the, the, to the which the five-year-old's like, yeah, the doors are locked. But what happens if I picked up this brick and I threw it in and I went through the window and we got in? That's the way in, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, should we get in? No. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, yeah? And this is where I could see firsthand that an eight-year-old does not have reverence for law enforcement. In fact, they don't care. But once you start breaking it down into the practicality, the stuff that makes sense, yeah? That's when you see the TikTok, and that's when they start getting it. And I explained to them that in real life, yeah, we go to the parks, and we can all enjoy a park because this is common space. This is where people come together and hang out. But on the internet, we don't really got common parks. We have open source applications, we have you know, community forums, but essentially if you're doing what you're doing, like looking at passwords and breaking in, you're basically trespassing and entering. And the same as we legislate behind, you know, wheel, uh, kids behind a wheel of a car, we should be legislating the ethics of cybersecurity. 
And the, the, the sh it's so important, it's ridiculous. When I watch those kids through, back the, the, through the same things, which five minutes ago they wanted to do that were sinister, like break and enter. And I said, all right, let's go back through this. Let's do a port scan. Let me teach you how to look at open ports and see maybe there's a re remote code shell on there. Yeah, maybe there's somebody else listening. Wouldn't that be important? Wouldn't that be a good skill to have? Go tell your teachers. Oh, they were, uh, they were all over it. And that's where I'm like, there is something to li my little animation up here. Yeah, because all the kids I've been working with want to play over here, not because they're cyber criminals and because they're bad kids, but because they just, you know, got in where they're not supposed to. And as a certified ethical hacker and penetration tester, um, I can also tell you firsthand that there's not a sign that's like warning, warning against the rules. Now you're breaking the law. No one tells you that online. You just want to get in. And when you get in, well, <laughs> that's the whole fun. So why not use this for a better place? Because today's hacker are not the creepy weirdos far, far away in other countries. Today's hacker could just be your little brother. And at the end of the day, we don't need another firewall. This isn't about automating. This is a human cognitive behavioral problem. Humans fighting humans. So automate all you want. At the end of the day, you're still going to need a human to look at what's going on. Whoa. All right. So this is kind of where I'm thinking we need to, we need to create a cyber army, channel this in to creating product and finding real solutions, not sending them behind bars. And this is where I kind of work five and a half years ago. I came over here. I was a uni student. I ran an event and just so happened to bring government, industry, and uh, talent together. And for the last five and a half years, I've kind of been having the hairy discussions that no one else wants to talk about. We stood at the Houses of Parliament talking about tech eradicating jobs. Now I'm going to sit here and say, well, kids are breaking code. What are we going to do about that? Because this is not going to go away. And everything about skills gets more and more in demand as we see the rise of threats continue. So I want to leave you with this. Before you go thinking hackers are the crazy, creepy guys, which admittingly a lot of them are, um, I want you to remember that hacking in itself is really the pursuit of knowledge. And one of the most inspiring, interesting things that I can share with you as becoming a hacker myself is that it teaches you different ways to think. Because there's not just one way to be. There's not just way, one way to think. And the greatest thing about this is turning something inside out, breaking it apart, and seeing how it works, and then putting it back together. Because it's only then can you see what really works. OK, I think I'm done. Thank you so very much. Thank you.